I was only four years when we when I started. Four years do, old. Do these brides know that a four-year-old was doing their wedding dresses? I don't think so. <laughs> More than anything, my aunt wanted me to take over her, uh, her seamstress line. I don't want this. You broke any... your sewing machine on yes, purpose? on purpose. I was literally gasping for air, because I thought, listen, I, I don't think I can do that. This lady wanted the suit from me just as an ignition for me to start sewing to clients. Oh my gosh! Welcome to The She Word, conversations that women rarely have, but really should. And this is an interview special, and I'm absolutely thrilled and super excited because I am with Mary Grace Bassani, who is the designer for the Haute Couture label, your label, Sassani. Can I just say, Mary Grace, before we go any further, yes. interviewing a designer like yourself, is really intimidating because I spent a very long time <laughs> deciding you what I was going to you wear. You don't have to, you really look beautiful. Why, thank you, so <laughs> do you. But it's really wonderful. It's been an amazing opportunity to get to know you and you are an incredibly colorful character. Thank you. And I'm looking forward to, to finding out all about that. So first of all, I want to ask you, how on earth did you get involved in haute couture and I'm going to try not to use the word fashion, haute couture design, because we're going to come to what the difference between haute couture, fashion, design is a little bit later on. Yes. But what's your story? Okay, so my story takes us back to many, many, many years ago, um, far away. We, I, literally, I was only four years when, we, when I started. Um, I used to live with my aunt. Okay. And she used to tell me today we have four or five wedding dresses to finish I was only four years old and because your aunt was a, a seamstress she was, yes she was a professional seamstress oh wow yes and um, she used to tell me okay so today this is the list I'm not joking you're four years old I was only four years old and and I used to do ham to the clothes, to the big wedding dresses. And if I make a mistake, I have to do them all again. Oh, four years old? Yes, four years old. Do, do these brides know that a four-year-old was doing their wedding dresses? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> I'm just thinking of women across the nation I'm now saying, saying oh my now. word. I'm saying it now because it's been quite a while ago. So yeah, yeah. I'm quite safe in that. <laughs> When I had my children, when I had my first son, and I realized what a four-year-old is, I asked my mother, I told her, why did my aunt use to make me sew hands and stitches and doing this at that age? I mean, you don't even know you're existing at the age of four right. years old, you know what I mean? And she told me, oh, you should thank her. Okay. <laughs> Yes, of course you should. <laughs> of course, of course. So you, you're already a seamstress at four years old, which is phenomenal. Where does your story go from there? When I was young, I used to live with my aunt more than with my mother. Although at my mother, I had to really go academically. Okay. Okay, so I really had to study. I used to go to a private school. Okay. But more than anything, my aunt wanted me to take over her... Uh, her seamstress line and actually I was doing both at the same time and it wasn't easy and it wasn't fun at all because I obviously didn't go out. My, my friends used to go out when I was around 13 years old. I used to want to go out but obviously I had work to do and so one fine day I woke up and I said that's it, this is it and I broke my sewing machine. And I told them, I don't want this. You broke any... your sewing machine on yes, purpose? on purpose. Now, we had this conversation because we actually had the same sewing machine because you had a, a classic Singer sewing machine. Yes. Which is a, with a pebble and, and... Yes. Which is amazing. How did you break it? I literally told them that this is not working. I just made something go wrong with the movement. <laughs> 
<laughs> and I said, listen, I said, I am not going to, to do it anymore. I wanted to go out. I wanted to enjoy myself. You, you wanted know? to be 13. Yes. Um, then, although I did that, sometimes I used to miss it. I must admit. At the age of 22, um, I was talking to this wonderful lady and she told me, I want you to make a suit for me. And I told her, oh, no, 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 no. I told her, I know how to sew, but I never sew anything to anyone else. I just do things for my own self. So you were still doing, doing seamstress work for yourself. You were yes. still making your own things. Yes, yes. And you got into conversation, I assume, with the lady. She didn't just exactly. grab you off the street, no, right? No, 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 of course. And um, I used to show her what I used to do for myself. And she was like, oh my God, you have to do something for me. And I told her, no, 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 please. And she told me, no, you have to do it. And I had to accept because she kept on insisting. And I remember she got me this piece of fabric, a beautiful piece of fabric, and it was striped, raw silk. And I was like trying, I was literally gasping for air. Because I told her, listen, I, I don't think I can do that because a striped fabric is very difficult. Because it. you were lying? Yes, you okay. have to match everything. Yeah, and it was a suit. And you have to match, if you have a pocket and it is striped, you have to go with the same lines. Oh only. my word, of yes. course. Yes, you have to really be precise. And if you don't know how to sew raw silk, under the foot of, of the machine, everything will move. And raw silk doesn't like movement and doesn't like taking it off and doing it again. And I was literally, literally shocked and scared to do it. And I told her, I told her, listen, I am not going to be responsible if something happens because I told you I am not very, very good still to okay. do it. And I'm assuming as well, raw silk, it sounds expensive. As uh, Yes. <laughs> Your face said it all, oh, yes, yes, that's an expensive fabric. <laughs> yes. And um, so, okay, I, I did the pattern. I did it on calico first, so that I will make sure that the size is good. And she came, she tried it on calico. And she said, yes, I'm feeling okay, I'm feeling comfortable. Okay, let's proceed on the fabric. And I said, Okay, are you sure? She told me yes. And to cut a very, very long story short, I did this. And when I finished it, I put it on the mannequin. And I was so in love with this suit. And I said, oh my God, did I do that? And I was like, okay, let me call her and let me tell her to come and try it. At the same time, I was like, I don't want to call her, I really want to have the suit here, you know what I mean? It was my first for a client and it was everything for me, the suit. And anyway, I called her, I told her it's ready for the first trial and she came. And when I opened the door, I could see her face like with a with thousand questions and anxious to see the suit. And I asked her, I, we went up, I had a small corridor and then I had to go upstairs and I stopped her in the middle of the stairs and I told her, are you excited to see the suit? She told, she told me, I don't know what the feeling is, but I can't wait. And I told her, listen, I told her, if it's good, you're not going to have it because I love it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. I literally, I just opened the door. I let her out of the room. I closed it and I went behind the suit to see her face. And I told her, okay, you can open the door and you can come in. And when she opened the door, she was like, oh my God. And I told her, you see, this is your suit and I love it. And you're not going to have it. <laughs> and she told me, but I have to try it on. I said, of course you have to try it on. And then before she literally tried it on, she went into each and every detail because apparently this lady wanted the suit from me just as an ignition for me to start sewing to clients oh my gosh yes 
Yes. Oh, wow. Yes. And she's still the biggest friend of mine. And she's like a mother to me. Um, and, and from that moment onwards, I, I literally, I was, I was like, oh my God, what, why, why I didn't do this before? But how old were you at that point? 20, 22, 23? 20, 22, I was. Uh-huh. I think, yes, I was going on to 22, actually. So she had seen something in you mm-hmm. that she wanted to guide you into that situation where you would then be pursuing this as a career. Yes. So then she's ignited this in you, as you said. Yes. So where do you take it from there? Well, what comes from after that? Um, actually, actually, one thing which then confirmed what I wanted in my life was when Jennifer Sarcher died. And this is something that whenever I remember, um, and so let me explain, because I, I, I get emotional. Um, at the time, we didn't have Facebook and we, 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 were, we, we only had uh, television. And um, I remember I was watching Canale Cinque, and and news came, flash news came, and they they said Gianni Versace just passed away, and I was like, oh my god, and I was crying. I was literally, literally crying, sobbing, and I I I I, I was asking my, what is going on? Why am I like this? I was like, it was like a member of a family died. You know what I mean? And the next day I said, okay, maybe I'll, I'll find myself feeling better. And I was really, really down. I didn't want to get up. And I didn't want to switch on the television. And I phoned my mother and I told her, I'm not feeling well. I, I have to go to the doctor. Because I, I, I wasn't feeling hungry at all, nothing. And when I went to, to my doctor, the doctor that normally we visit, um, he told me, but how do you know? I mean, how, 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 what, what's the connection? Mm-hmm. And he was trying. And then myself, I realized that when I was around 11, 10, even younger, I used to buy magazines. I have all the magazines, Vogue, Elle, all of them. And I used to, to buy every month around four magazines, four different magazines. And obviously, I used to read the, the stories, and I used to go through all the stories. And this is why I re, I, it really affected me badly, because it was like living with these people throughout the years. And for me, Gianni Versace's death was something that the world lost, if you know what I mean. Yeah, and, and obviously a, a tragic and, and really mind-blowing story of the Versace yes, brand. Yes, and I said, and I literally fell in love with what I'm doing more. And I never looked back. So you've been influenced by Versace, you've been influenced by this woman who saw something in you. Obviously, you've also been influenced by your aunt and your aunt putting you to work at four years old. But beyond your experience, was there a point where you said, okay, I need to study this, I need to understand a little bit more? Because I know that that, um, the the human body has been of interest to you as well and how we wear our clothes and how. So so where did that take you from there? Or did you just throw yourself into designing clothes? No, not really. Um, In the meantime, because obviously um, a hot couture designer in Malta is not easy to 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 leap out there and start like a lot of businesses you know and just for anybody who doesn't know haute couture this is haute couture is when you design a single piece yes for a specific person yes and that is where the story comes behind every piece that we design and i'm saying we because we are a whole team. I have a whole team behind me. Um, there is a story. And each piece 
tells the character of the person. Whenever I design something, I, I don't design it just because it's for a special event or it's for a wedding or it's for a bride. I always like to take out the character in each piece we design. But that's not enough. You have to know the body, you have to know anatomy. Our body is made out of circles, okay? And what I see when I see a lady, sometimes a woman comes in front of me and she says, but I'm like this and I have this and I have that and I have this and I tell her you have nothing, you have beauty. It's because it's your experience in life. It's my mission to make you feel beautiful in the dress that we will be doing for you. The rest, we leave it up to us. You know what I mean? When it comes to hot couture, it's definitely nothing stressful because I want to enjoy the story that we're doing. I want, I want them to experience the beautiful um, procedure of the dress. And that is where I, I enjoy my work because I meet people, I hear their stories, and in the meantime, we're creating something amazing for them. So this is what makes hot couture and what makes Sasani special, if you know what I mean. Yes, but I feel like we've missed out a bit of the journey along the way because you just would, before I jumped in and said, just confirm haute couture for me, you mentioned that haute couture in, in Malta is difficult. Yes. Uh, why? And, and then, I suppose even going back even further, my question to you would be, why choose to go down the haute couture route? What was it about haute couture, about that, that personalization that appealed to you? Because you could have done all sorts of things. You could have made fashion pieces that were easier to sell. So mm -hmm. why, why did you, Mary Grace, decide, I'm going to go down that route? Um, for many reasons, I think. There is not just one reason. First of all, it takes me to my childhood, the way I was brought up. Um, I can still remember my auntie with, with, with her clients and the conversations they used to hold um, and the passion that there was in it. And yes, that, that I want to relive it. I want to relive it. Uh, a second thing which I want to, to point out is that I don't like having from one dress many dresses. I like, I like individuals to wear something that it's their own and, and sort of you, you, you feel that the dress is made for you. You didn't go and just buy it on the shelf, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but, but one reason which, which for me is very important is that we women tend to feel sometimes down because of the weight we carry yeah. or because our physique is not perfect. Mm -hmm. And when, when I see the faces in the mirror of that lady looking at her and telling me, is this me? And that is where the challenge is, you know? If I don't hear that sentence, there is something wrong. But in each and every dress we design, this, the, the statement comes out. And that is what we look after. And that is why I created Sasani. You see now, you see, this is, a, this is a spaghetti conversation. Because every time you say something, I'm unraveling a whole bunch of other questions and other things to talk about. Because as you said, you know, that, that idea of, of something being tailored uh, for a woman specifically, I want to go back again mm -hmm. to the, what you started when you started talking about haute couture, about it being difficult in Malta. Mm -hmm. Because to me, it sounds like that would be every woman's dream mm -hmm. to, to have a, a dress or a, an item of clothing that is designed specifically for you. Mm. So why is that difficult in Malta? And I tell you why, because um, first of all, as you know, Malta is very small and we have thousands of shops and um, 
the thing is that in Malta, we are still lacking a bit the way we, we bring forward hot couture. Um, I don't know how to put it in very diplomatic way. I don't like being diplomatic. I'm not a diplomatic you person. You don't have to be you. diplomatic. Yes, but I don't want to say anything which might sound uh, wrong. But sometimes um, people that try to do something who are not really professionals and tend to do hot couture, then many, many people, when the, everything goes wrong, they are scared to go for a hot couture dress, if you know what I mean. Yes. Right? Yes. So, I think, I think, we need um, to, to build up more confidence in hot couture in Malta. Okay? Mm -hmm. I mean, abroad, the big brands don't have issues for people to go and buy anything like the big brands. I don't want to mention any names, but if I want that specific brand, I'm going there because I know that that is that specific brand and because of that name, right, I'm going to get something really good and quality good and good. Mm -hmm. But Imagine I just started way back and no one knows about me. So the kickoff is very difficult. Who is she? What can she do? And thank God, because word of mouth is very strong then in Malta here, yes. this is what I mean. Yeah. If you do something wrong, then the word of mouth is going to drive you crazy. But you know? I presume that when you set up Sisani and you set up your haute couture, the word of mouth was actually incredibly positive for you. You had good experience exactly. because you are who you are now and you are doing what yes. you're doing in the most fabulous way. Yes. yes. So I'm assuming that there was some positive. There was, all, thank God, it was always positive. But to build that up, this is what, what I, I am emphasizing on, it's just the, the startup is very difficult. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then by the time you will say, okay, so this is it. This is where we're landing, you know? But once you land and you have all those clients behind you, you're targeting something else, okay? And you're always evolving and you're always trying to do other things. And your own clients come and tell you, listen, we need this. Can you do this for us? And can you go and, you know? Um, but you know what I call Sasani? Our big family. Sasani has a very, very big family. And this is what I want to do. I want to create this big family that I know that it is not, they are not clients. I don't call them clients. I got you, right. So these are, these are members of your family that are, are, you're very fond of. I mean, my clients became like my family, yeah. if you yeah, know yeah. what I yes, mean. Yes. Because it's, it's, it, when they do the dresses at Sasani, there's an experience. Yeah. We give them an experience. And, they, and we, 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 we talk about a lot of things that might not have any, anything to do with the dress, if you know what I mean. But it's like, yes, it's like, you know, we're at home with the client. So looking a little bit more about your family of your clients, who and when would somebody come to you for a single designed, specifically designed piece of couture. I'm assuming it would be for a special occasion or I'm mm -hmm. assuming it would be not, uh, not necessarily a day by day item of clothing. Am I right? Am I wrong? T tell me because I'm, I'm have, curious. Okay, so actually, yes, we have, we have, wed we have brides, we have mother of the brides um, and we have other members of the weddings. 
And we have also ladies who have special occasions like conferences, events. Um, we actually do a lot of things. We don't just do occasional special occasions. Mm-hmm. I mean, even suits, tailored suits. I love suits. And it's interesting, though, just to touch on that, because then you've gone full circle. You mentioned about weddings Mm -hmm. and mother of the bride and and about brides. And you've gone full circle from you being a four-year-old and sewing the hem of a a wedding dress all the way back. And now you're doing this under Sasani as part of your Sasani haute couture. Now, of course, I'm curious. This is just me being curious. But there's a lot of pressure. A lot. Is there? I would have thought so, because that's the woman's <laughs> one day. Yes, a lot of pressure. Um, but I, you know what's the difference? I love that pressure. Oh, really? Yes. And that is, if you wake up in the morning and you feel like that pressure is not, is not doing well to you, then I stop. Because it's like... I don't know how I'm going to put it, but each and every item we create, it's like giving birth. And you're, you're, you're anxious. You're, you're like... Still now? Yes, of course. If you're not anxious, then nothing is good. I mean, when, 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 when from fabric to something which comes to life, for me, it's like, it's like oh my God, look at this. And, and, and it's, it's literally amazing. And then when, when the client arrives and I see her walking in the studio and I say, okay, she's here. And we have this special room, which will be literally closed so that she won't see it until, she, until we tell her. We just open the room. I, I'm still using the same method which I used for my first lady. It's amazing. Yes. And... Um, and that we open the room and the dress is on the mannequin. And that minute is what I look for. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, it's still from the same, that same moment that you experienced when you were 21, nearly 22. Same procedure. That's still, you, you, you're going through the whole thing again. Yes, yes, yes. Wow. It's the same procedure because it's nice to see um, that the pressure that they have with tears in their eyes and they say oh my god i can't believe this i i i i I was so excited and i was so nervous to see the dress and then all of a sudden tears are falling down and and she's happy and screaming and oh my god that's amazing that's absolutely amazing yes 